Welcome to the Fun Astrology Podcast. It's Thursday, July 21st. We are scooting through this week, aren't we? Got a little bit of a break in the sky today. Hi, Thomas Miller. Welcome in. If this is your first time. Glad to have you. We do this every day. And talking about the aspects in the sky overhead, not many to discuss today. Kind of had to reach down in the barrel for one. In fact, Jupiter semi-squares Saturn at 7.15 this morning. Jupiter, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, goes retrograde a week from today, Thursday the 28th, also the new moon day. It will be retrograde all the way to November 23rd. Now, the other event that we're marking to today is the moon wobble. We've talked about that earlier in the week. That's when uh, triggered by the sun aligning with the nodes of the moon, either by a conjunction or a square. So it happens about every 80, I think it's 88 days, 84 days, something like that, that the sun either squares the nodes of the moon or conjoins one of the nodes of the moon. This time it's a square, and that happens on August 10th. So this moon wobble technique is you back up from that day, 21 days, and then the waxing period or the separating period would be seven days. So it begins today, then of course it would end on August 17th. If you're new and you haven't heard us talk about that, it's a concept that is rarely talked about in astrological circles. I learned it from a guy in Los Angeles who used to do astrology radio years ago, but it is something that patternably can trigger Uranian kind of, uh, it's like either Uranus on steroids or Mercury retrograde on steroids, but it's like things happen during the, especially what I've observed is the first couple of weeks of this window. And that fits this time frame that we've been talking about, particularly around the Uranian conjunction with the North Node in Taurus, which happens on the 26th, followed by the Mars conjunction with Uranus in Taurus on August 1st. All of that was mentioned in our last Saturday episode on financial astrology as well. Now, I'm trying to be diligent and use these little windows to take listener questions and get caught up on some of these. This is a great one from Julie. The natural zodiacal order obviously always starts with Aries as the first house, Mars being the ruler. But depending on your ascendant, obviously that zodiacal order is going to shift. And say, in instance, for me, I have the first house in Sagittarius, even though I have a Scorpio ascendant. Does that mean that that first house, no matter what zodiac sign is placed there, that it's always going to be connected to that Mars energy since Mars rules basically the first house. I think of it as like basically the zodiacal positions are like movable houses or like a mobile home, but the foundation or the earth on which that home rests always remains the same. So no matter what's placed there, no matter what's on top of it, it's always going to be built upon that energy of the foundation of that house. Julie, I love this because it is a point that people get confused about because you do say, well, first of all, it's kind of like, wait a minute, what are you talking about Aries in the first house? Where does that come from? Well, our tropical Western Zodiac begins at the spring equinox, Aries, springtime, new beginnings. So we do indeed position in zodiacal order. Our base chart begins with Aries in the first house. Now, if you're talking about a whole sign house system chart, then it would be the entire first house. Taurus is the entire second house, Gemini the entire third, and around we go. And by the way, that house system is experiencing quite a revival due to people like Chris Brennan, Robert Hand, etc. A lot of people are using whole sign houses again. I, like most of us, cut my teeth on Placidus. And depending on how far away from the equator you are born, that depends on how big and small some of your houses are. So it's asymmetric. And that's where you can have even Taurus, for example, could be engulfed inside that first house. It's called intercepted. So now you could have Aries and Taurus and theoretically even Gemini all in the first house. So that is where it starts to get confusing. And I like Julie's analogy of like it's as though you had little RVs, let's say, my world mobile home, RVs, and you move them around. But the ground on which they are parked 
is that kind of soil. That's good. What I like to use is Photoshop layers. We go out here and we take a beautiful sunset picture at the beach. It's a gorgeous shot. We bring it home, can't wait to load it into the computer and get it into Photoshop so we can start adding all these elements to it. The base layer is always the sunset, but we can hit that plus sign and we can add a layer and make it sepia. Hit the layer again and change the contrast in the clouds. Add a layer, we can paint out that oil rig out on the horizon. You get the idea. It's all still the picture of the sunset. Your natal chart is like the sunset picture. And then we can add transits as a layer, secondary progressions as a layer, solar arc progressions as a layer. Then we can look at the midpoint positions of the planets. We can look at harmonics, completely different chart. We can change it from a wheel to a dial and use the Uranian technique of interpretation. Or we could turn it into a square and make it Vedic. What blows your mind is you'll get something from each and all of them. You know, another thing I like to use is that analogy of Google Maps of the soul as what astrology is in the first place. Well, on my map on the phone, I can put it in the satellite view or then I can add bicycle trails to it, traffic, you know, all these different elements that can go into the interpretation of that base map. So it is. It's building blocks. It absolutely is building blocks. Whatever image allows you to think that way, the base chart stays the same. So yes, you are building on first house Aryan characteristics. And you just keep adding layers and layers and layers. It's such a beautiful picture in the end and so vast and so deep. Thanks, Julie. Love having you around. Thanks for being part of our Discord channel. Hop over there if you'd like to continue the conversation. Discord, fun astrology, podcast. <laughs> I almost said dot com. You guys have a great one. We'll see you tomorrow for TGI Friday. We got our last sign change of the month. It's the sun. We'll see you tomorrow.